Good morning, class. Good morning, Brother Keith. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. Faith School is the place where my spirit is fed, where my faith grows stronger, and where I learn how to be an overcomer. Praise God. You can learn, and it is something that you learn and grow in. Spiritual things. Uh, are not just automatic just because you, you're born again. When you're born again, you're born again a baby. And the scripture said, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And so you do grow in, uh, in the knowledge of the things of God. You grow in faith. You grow in strength. And that's one of the big purposes of faith school is that you can get a, a regular uh, input infusion, just like you need to eat physically every day to stay strong, you need to eat spiritually every day. So get your Bible, get something to make some notes with, come into the classroom, we've saved you a seat right here in the front. Sometimes you'll hear people say, well, you know, we're, we're coming into your, uh, your you know, house you know, through television. No, we want you to come in here. We want you to come in here, put everything aside, uh, pause things, put things on silent. Don't try to do a bunch of things while this is going on. Give the Lord your full attention and you'll get some wonderful good answers. You'll get some help. Lord, all of us agree together as touching this, asking for utterance, anointing, direction, answers, help. We believe in you. We trust you. We look to you. And we know it's your will to give us these things so we know you hear us and we know our petition is granted. Thank you, Lord, for helping us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Look, please, in the Scripture, our great textbook, the Bible, to uh, Hebrews, the third chapter. For some weeks now, we have been on uh, a series that we're calling Overcoming Unbelief. And we studied in previous uh, classes, and you can go online to faithschool.org, O-R-G, and get all of the previous lessons, no, no charge, no cost, no subscription. And uh, we built upon that, uh, seeing how God delivered His people out of Egyptian bondage in the book of Exodus and Numbers, and um, uh, how that... Uh, even though they had been miraculously delivered, they didn't go in to the promised land that God had prepared for them and had intended for them and planned for them to enjoy. And so it reveals something that a lot of church going people just are unwilling to look at or, or, or haven't heard or understood. Just because something, some good things are God's will for you in your life, that doesn't mean you'll automatically enjoy it. It doesn't mean it, it, it will happen just because it's the will of God. Now that's contrary to how a lot of people think, and a lot of folks have actually been taught that, that if it's God's will, it's going to happen. And if it happened, it must have been God's will. But that's simply not true. That's not what the Bible teaches. And if you'll, if you'll look at it with open and, and honest eyes and heart, you'll see that God does not control us. He's given us a will. We can choose. Just That's what happened when it all went wrong with Adam and Eve in the garden. Would you say it was God's will for them to disobey Him and sin against Him, reject Him, what He said? Then what happened afterwards, the aftermath of their disobedience? How is that the perfect will of God? No, it's not. But thank God, even though people have messed up so terribly, and all of us have made mistakes, that's why Jesus had to come. 
because we couldn't fix it ourselves. Uh, we, we could not make it right ourselves. We couldn't earn our salvation. Uh, we couldn't become good enough to, to merit it. The only way we could be restored to the place God intended for, for man to have was for Jesus, who was lived a sinless, spotless life, to come and take our place, take our place, and was treated like a sinner and judged for our sins, but he raised triumphant over it all, and all that believe in him are cleansed from what they could not cleanse themselves of, are free from what they could not free and rid themselves of. So uh, no matter how much bondage you've been in, what kind of habits, addictions, sin, deprivation, you name it, no matter how low you've gone, no matter how bad it's been, lying, stealing, deceiving, it is not hopeless. That's why Jesus came, to pay the price for all the bad stuff you've done so that he didn't deserve the punishment and judgment he got so that you could get and I could get what we didn't deserve, being made right being made clean, being accepted with God, being washed. And nothing can cleanse your conscience of all the bad stuff you've done except the blood of Jesus. That's what the scripture says. It's the only thing that can cleanse the conscience and actually make you free from your failures, from your mistakes. If you've never... Uh, believed on him, if you've never received on him, you can do it right now. Right here, right now. It takes a choice of the heart. And the scripture says, if you believe in your heart that uh, uh, Jesus is, is the Lord and that God has raised him from the dead and you confess with your mouth, Jesus is your Lord, you will be saved. It's written in the Word. Hallelujah. So do it right now. And class, join in with everybody that's, that's doing this. Say it out loud. Father God, Father God I, believe in you, I believe in you that you are the creator, are the creator of, the of the heavens and the earth and why I have life and why I exist. And I believe you sent Jesus. He died on the cross. He paid for my sins, every failure, every mistake, but you have raised him from the dead and he's alive right now. King of kings, Lord of lords, Jesus, I receive you and confess you as the Lord of my life. I receive all you've done for me, the cleansing the washing that you've made me acceptable by your blood. Thank you for saving me. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Friend, that's, that's the greatest choice you'll ever make. That's the greatest decision you will ever make. Thank God, because of what he has done, you and I can have what we could have never earned what we could have never worked hard enough, made ourselves good enough to get, is just given to us as a free gift. What is, what is that? Acceptance by God, inclusion in His eternal family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Given a place and a part in His eternal plan. And a big part of that plan is faith. He's a faith God. He, he himself functions by faith. The Bible said he created the, the worlds. We're talking about planets and stars and galaxies. He did this, the Bible said. He, he created it by faith. He spoke it into existence. Now you'll hear sometimes, sometimes people say, oh, I, I don't believe all that. Well, who made it then? Who made it? Well, it just sprang into existence by itself. Did it? No, you don't believe that. 
Something made it. Someone made it. Hallelujah. That's a choice. What you believe, what you don't believe, that's faith is a choice. Say it out loud, everybody. Faith, faith. is a choice. It's a choice. That, that, that's a great thing to understand. You'll hear people say, I just, I just can't believe that. Well, that's not true. By nature of what faith is, you can believe anything you choose to believe. Just look around. People are believing all kinds of bizarre stuff. It doesn't have to be true <laughs> for you to believe it. But that's what deception is. Believing something is true that it's not. Faith is a choice. And so it's a choice to believe whether God exists or he doesn't. Whether the Bible is his word or it's not. It's always a choice. And every time you encounter some situation in your life, you got to decide what you're going to believe about it. And that will determine what you do about it. Your beliefs Govern everything in your life. Why you do what you do, if you do what you do. It governs everything. And friend, if there was anything better around, I might check into it. But this is it. I'm telling you. Faith in God, knowing Him, following Him. The more I scrutinize, the more I examine His Word and His things, the more perfect I see them to be. There is no other book in all the world like this book. None. None. It is perfect. It is without error. Now all the translations are not without error. But the original words that he spoke, they are perfect. They are without error. You can build your life on it. You can trust it completely. I do. And a lot of people like me do too. Right? Yes. These folks do. Yes. How about you? <laughs> yeah. Well, what we saw here in uh, Hebrews 3 is that uh, they didn't enter into the promised land, to Canaan's land, and it tells you why. The scripture says in verse 7, it said, Wherefore, as the Holy Spirit says today, if you will hear his voice, Harden not your hearts, as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, saw my works forty years, wherefore I was grieved with that generation, and said they do alway err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath they shall not enter into my rest. He said concerning them that... The generation that he delivered out of Egyptian bondage. They never learned him, God, and how he thought, thinks, and how he works his ways. Moses, the psalmist said, knew something of his ways while they only saw his acts. They saw what God did, but they didn't understand his ways. Well, among his ways, God is a faith God. Without faith, it is impossible to please him, the scripture said. He operate, He functions by faith, and he expects us to operate by faith. And they, they refused to. That generation absolutely refused to do it. Showing that God won't make you do something, even though it's his will and plan. Keep reading. It says, verse 12, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. There is an unbelief that's just the result of ignorance. You don't know, you don't believe because you don't even know about it. You're not even aware of it. But that's not what this is talking about when it says evil. Why would it be evil? Why would ignorance be evil? He's not talking about ignorance here. There's another kind of unbelief, and it's not from lack of knowing. It's from being unpersuadable. That you, you know it, you've heard it, but you refuse to accept it. You refuse to believe it, and that's what happened with them, and that's what has happened with many people. They've heard things. They've even seen things. 
but they still, they, they choose not to, they refuse. And that is one of the worst things that could ever happen to any of us. Because if you refuse to believe, even though you've been told, even though you've been shown repeatedly, repeatedly, you get in a place where even God can't help you. Now that's a strong phrase. I know people say, well, God can't help you. Yeah, because to help you, he'd have to override your will and make you do something. He's not going to do that. So you get in a place where you can't be helped. And that, that is a truly hopeless place. And it would be your own fault. But thank God if you're teachable, right? If you're instructable, if you're willing to listen, if you're willing to make a change when you see that you were wrong, then there's nothing too hard for God to fix. Is that right? I don't care how bad it was, how long it's been that way. It can be fixed if you're willing to believe. How many believers do I have in the class? Let me see. How many believe? You're willing. Are you willing? Say it out loud. Lord, I'm willing, Lord, I'm willing. to be instructed. be instructed. I'm willing to be taught. I'm willing to change. I'm willing to, change. I'm willing to repent. I'm willing to, repent. I'm, willing to I'm willing to believe and to trust in you. Trust in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, friend, if you mean that, and Lord, he sees your heart, he knows if you do or not. If that is true, you're well on your way to your answer already before your head even knows it. You're on your way. Notice he said, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. Skip down to verse 18. To whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Now, this is not just something that happened a long, long time ago that's got nothing to do with us. Why is this recorded? The very next phrase says, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. He's saying the same danger exists with us today. What? God delivered his people out of death, out of slavery. And his plan was not just to deliver them out of that, but to take them in to what he called a, a, a land that flowed with milk and honey. Beautiful place. Rich place. You remember they brought back some of the fruit of it. And two men carried a staff that had a bunch of uh, clusters of grapes that was that big. That two men carried it on a staff. Well, you talk about produce. <laughs> right? You talk about, and, and they had pomegranates and, and figs and and the list went on, and it was just, is a place God had handpicked for his people. And he said, he said, you're going to move in to houses you didn't build, uh, wells you, you're going to drink from that you didn't dig, uh, vineyards and orchards that you didn't plant, uh, just, just ready for you, ready to move in and start enjoying. And yet that bunch never enjoyed it. One day. Why talk to us about that? Well, verse 1 says, Let us fear and watch, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. What does that mean? There's all kind of people that are mad at God. Church going people, a lot of people that no longer go to church because they, uh, you know, they... They wanted something or they prayed for something and it didn't happen or it didn't happen exactly the way they thought it should or when it should or, or whatever. And, and they just, they're not living a full life or a satisfying life and they're blaming God. And others have even told them, well, it just must not be God's will for you to enjoy these things. Well, that'd be like telling them it wasn't God's will to enjoy Canaan's land. It was. Well, if it's God's will, then they'll enjoy it, right? They didn't. No, they didn't. Even though it was God's will and plan. And here's the thing. They thought, we, we, we studied this a few weeks ago over in Numbers 14. 
They thought it was the walled cities, the walls, that kept them out. They thought it was the giants. They were so big and trained warriors. They thought that's why they couldn't enjoy that. But according to the Bible, why were they kept out? Help me out, class. Why? Verse 19. We see they could not enter in because of what? Not giants, not walls, not iron chariots, not, not any of that. Why, why talk about this? Because all kind of people are thinking, I can't have this because uh, I'm too young, I'm too old, I don't have the connections, I don't have the education, I'm too heavy, I'm too thin, I don't have the education as far as this degree or that degree, I don't know anybody, I don't have contacts. If you listen, the enemy will give you a thousand reasons why you can't enjoy Canaan's land. But what would it be that's actually keeping you out? Unbelief. Unbelief. And specifically, a lack of faith in God. Lack of faith in Him. Now, we're not just talking about faith in yourself. People say, well, that's the thing. You've got you to believe in yourself and you've got to demand your rights. No. <laughs> no. That's not the faith way. That's man's way. You do have to believe you can do what he tells you you can do. Amen. you got to believe that. But again, see, in that case, my confidence is not just in myself. My confidence is in my God Amen. working in me, helping me. I need to admit right off the bat, without him, I can't do it. Without him, I'm not enough. Without him, I won't succeed. Oh, but thank God, I'm not without him. I said, I'm not without him. He's in me, he's with me, and if I listen to him, and if I trust him, and if I'll obey him, all things are possible with God, and all things are possible to him or her that believes. Is that you? Yes. Well, what does that mean? It means I can get to where he wants me to be. I can enjoy what he has planned for me. But it won't just fall on you automatically because you're alive or because God loves you or because it's his plan for you. It will not just all happen. That's why the scripture says you've got to fight the good fight of faith. Say it out loud. Fight. fight. The good fight, the good fight. Of, faith. of faith. What, what am I fighting? What, why would fighting be involved? Well, you're not fighting against God. That'd be a losing battle. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm fighting against the devil. Not exactly. If he tempts you or tries to discourage you, that kind of thing, well, yeah, you resist that, but you don't have to defeat the devil. Jesus did that for you. He is a defeated foe. Come on, can you see this? Well, what, what's, the, what's the thing I'm, I'm fighting against? Well, if it's the good fight of Faith, what's the enemy of faith? Unbelief. Come on, come on, can you see that? If you're full of unbelief, are you full of faith? No. If you're full of faith, are you full of unbelief? No. So, so this, this thing called unbelief, that's even called evil right here, it is a subtle, it is a... a, a just almost ever present thing around us in this world. The world is full of it. It's, it's like an ugly, stinky, sticky contaminant. Just going through this world, hearing people talk and seeing what they do, you're going to see unbelief, you're going to hear unbelief. It's just all around you, and you've got to fight it. I said, you've got to fight it if you want to have what God wants you to have. You got to fight the temptation to fear, to doubt, to not trust Him, to not obey Him. You've got to overcome those things 
in order to enjoy what God had, had planned for you. Everybody said out loud, I, I'm, a believer I'm a believer in my God. In my God. I'm, not I'm not a doubter. I refuse to doubt, refuse to doubt. In, Jesus name. in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Look, look at verse 2 and 3 here in chapter 4 of Hebrews. For unto us the gospel was preached as well as unto them. And the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Jesus taught what we call the parable of the sower. How that he said in, in Mark 4 and other places, the sower sows the, the seed and it was the word. And he mentioned four types of ground that the, the sower sowed seed on wayside ground, stony ground, and uh, thorny ground, and good ground. And you know it was only one of those patches of ground that brought forth any results. Uh, you could say three-fourths of what was sown got no results. Well, the ground is types of people, and the seed is the Word. Is it possible for the seed, the good seed of God, the Word of God to be sown on people and get no results? No results. Well, it happened three out of four times in that situation. Uh, why? Because of this thing we're talking about, unbelief. The enemy will come immediately and try to steal the Word from you if he can. The thorns and briars and stuff will grow up and try to choke the Word out of you. Can you see that? And, and he, through that passage, he portrays it. And when the word begins to come up, persecution because of the word, the heat will bear down. And, and if you don't have more word coming in and moisture keeping you going, uh, you'll, you'll dry up and, and give up. Oh, but there's good ground. Amen. I said, I think I'm looking at some good ground. I'm looking at some good ground. There's good ground where it took root. It was watered. It stayed and it brought forth fruit. Some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. That's big results. I said that's big results. Results you can see, results you can feel, results you experience in your life. Said out loud class, the Word of God is coming into me. I'm good ground. It's growing in me. It's producing a harvest. The Word is working mightily in me. Hallelujah. That's it. Our time's up today. Come back with us tomorrow. There's a whole lot more to see. We just read the text today. So let's get to some other parts next day. We'll see you soon back here in Faith School. I've got a victory living inside. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today. But you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.